yeah and this this thing is is like extremely extremely small but it's still some kind of positive constant so so just we need to to examine this this thing and what what I claim that even even just this one term is much larger than this polynomial px yeah? so so what we have done is we took the exponential we use binomial theorem to to write it down as sum of of a huge huge amount of of parentheses yeah? uh, we are working with x uh, at, uh, big enough at least at least at least n plus one so so this term will, will appear there and now i'm claiming even just this one term is huge enough to beat the polynomial down yeah so so this is everything what what we need so so what is this this mysterious number x choose n plus one and uh, this is actually actually kind of good lesson about about combinatorial combina uh, combination numbers is that that this thing is is actually very close to x to n plus one yeah? why because because um, what what we can do here is to is to write it down so so this thing here is is x times x minus one times x minus two times so on so we get to we get to we have n and plus one terms here so so this is nothing else than uh, x minus n over n plus one factorial yeah but we are looking at this quantity as some function of, of x yeah so we don't really care about this n plus one this is some kind of constant so this will be a huge constant but it's still a constant so we don't care about it yeah so, so this is this is constant and this thing here is product of of polynomials of like this this uh, this thing here is is a polynomial of degree n plus one because x is here x is here n plus one times yeah so so this is some some kind of c times c times uh, x n plus one this constant will be will be very small yeah but we don't really care about it that much and um, so so this is this is just polynomial of degree n plus one yeah so if we would like to prove this we are just we just need to calculate the limit of x going to infinity of x choose n plus one epsilon two to n plus one over this polynomial polynomial of degree n yeah, but this is nothing else than and as I, as I proved uh, than some limit of of x n plus one over over px so this is polynomial of degree n this is polynomial of degree n plus one and we have already proved that, that this this thing here is going to to be much larger so this is infinity and this this concludes concludes the proof yeah, so so we just know some some basics how to how to compare compare functions so the, um, another another interesting function would be would be factorial yeah so um, let me just just quickly go through factorial and then then i will i will show one one application to to comparing some kind of, of real life quantities and that, that will be it for for today's today's lesson so 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 factorial is, is some kind of, of mysterious function and one, one could say why, why we should we should care about it that much but it's some kind of basic function which is appearing everywhere in combinatorics yeah, so we have n times n minus one times n minus two and then so on yeah, and uh, so we would like to have some kind of, of good good estimate for this function because what what to do when we want to to compare this thing with some some other other functions for example is factorial 
go growing slower or faster than exponential. It's, it's not very clear. So this function is not very nice to work with products like this. It's not very nice. So, so what we can do is to find some good bounds for factorial. Uh, so what we can do here is to have some upper bound. We can make some. We can make all the terms slightly larger. And it's not difficult to see that upper good some very simple and not not so bad upper bound is n to n. Uh, it's it's not perfect and uh, it's clearly very very like overkill for for this value will be will be much much smaller. Uh, but it in some cases this help and we don't have to care about it. Yeah? And we can also bound it from, from bottom with something which is which is um, of value n to n half. And this is this is extremely simple, simple case. So um, but maybe a little little a little faster, a little little more difficult than before. So let me let me write it down. So we have n times n minus one times a minus two, so on times five times four times three times two times one. And what we are going to do, we are going to pair the numbers in, in this pattern that we take outer pair, then we take another outer pair and so on. So we pair the numbers on the opposite side of the of the number. Yeah? And so we can reorder this huge product in such a way that we have one pair, then we have another pair, and so on, and so we have some last pair. Yeah? And so we are going to bound each of these pairs. We have n half of them. Yeah, yeah this, this n half should be like uh, lower or upper part, but, but somehow we, we don't really care about it that much. Yeah, so something, something like that, and um, yeah, uh, okay. So we just need to bound each of of these pairs, the product of of these two pairs, and maybe you know that when you take a uh, product of two numbers, a and b, such that a plus b is equal ten, uh, equal equal n, and you would like to maximize their product, then the best possibility is a equal b equal n half. Yeah, so the largest pair will be in the middle. Yeah, and this this largest pair will be something like uh, something like um, n uh, half. Yeah, so so what what's what is the term? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so so we t we take uh, we take um, this this pair. So we have n times k times n. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, we need we need. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we need we need to overbound, and so so this this thing is always at least at least uh, n. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. I was, I was quite kind of confused. So, so the thing is that that these like, things like this work when we have uh, I don't know a is a and b are lying in, in zero to n. Yeah. So the size of of a times b is is looking like this. And the larger value is is for the zero, for the middle, and the Smallest value is for for uh, for the borders. Yeah. So the smallest value here is n times one. Yeah. And so every parenthesis here can be bounded from the bottom by n. So so this this quantity here is is um, at least. Ah, sorry. This is uh, this quantity here is at least n to to n half. Yeah? So so something something like this like this holds and, and this is this is kind of kind of useful useful um, useful uh, useful bounding because for example we can compare factorials to an exponential and it will work. 
Yeah? And the, the thing is that, that we want to show that this thing is infinity. Yeah? That the factorial is much, much faster than, than uh, any exponential. So, so how to how to do it? So, so this this exponential here is, is some something, and this factorial we can we can bound this factorial from the bottom, and we can instead of it calculate a limit, which which can look which can look. Uh, like like this, we can instead of it calculate limit of, of n to n half over q n. It's not very difficult to see that this is growing much faster, yeah, because with each term here, this thing increases just by q, but here by something like like square root of n. Yeah, so so this after some time will increase much 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 faster. Yeah. Um, so so this is infinity. Also very similar. We can prove that the limit of of q n over p n to to exponentials like like this is um, just given by by which of of these these terms is is larger. If if q is larger than p, then it's going to infinity. If p is larger than q, then it's going to zero. And if they are the same, it's going to, to one. Yeah, so, um, so in this case, we can we can j put here put here q plus one, uh, and after some time it will it will work always. So, so uh, this is this is pure infinity, and this this also depends on on q and p. Uh, it's not very difficult, difficult to do. Yeah. So so maybe maybe. Uh, two more facts about about factorials are mm, so one one thing is that um, when uh, we would like to we would like to calculate something like like uh, n factorial and n to n we would like to compare these two these two things together then um, then these these bounds which which we established before they won't help much. Yeah, because because we we cannot we cannot prove 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 uh, that like like what holds is that, that this thing is is zero. Yeah, but but how to how to prove this? We have just upper bound n to n, and we cannot we cannot use it here. Yeah, so so this won't help here, but we can we can make the bound slightly just a little smaller. Uh, we were using this this upper bound in such a way that each term can be bounded, ca bounded from from bottom, bounded from from top by by n. Yes. So what we can do is to take first k k terms here, so k times k minus one to one, and these terms are together just k factorial and if the k is constant this is just some kind of constant so we can get some better bound then this is smaller than k factorial times n2 n minus k yeah? and if we put it here for k equal 1 what we obtain is is, um, is uh, this is this is upper bound so so this is this is at most this is bounded. Um, sorry, we are increasing. We are increasing the uh, denominator, and so um, yes. Um, so if we increase the denominator, the thing will become become larger, and we would like to show that it's. Uh, we should we should make lower. Yeah, yeah. We will we will make upper bound which will be equal zero, and then then we win because we know that it, this is this is non-negative. So, so mm, yeah. So so upper bound in this case we, we make upper bound. So upper bound in this case is is uh, k factorial one factorial to n to n minus one over n to n, and this this is clearly like we can we can reduce this this thing here. This is nothing else that limit one over n, which is. Uh, which is uh, zero.
Yeah, meaning, yeah, meaning that this this thing here is is going to zero also, yeah, because this is bounded between zero and zero.